Hi, I'm Charlie Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and the Frederick Health Hospital. Today we're going to talk about how to handle no reflow, a complication that is not infrequently seen, especially during STEMI or uh, uh, saphenous vein graft PCI. The patient is a 45-year-old man with uh, no medical history. Uh, he developed chest pressure uh, after his morning run. He ignored it, uh, but a few hours later, uh, his uh, chest pain came back and worsened, and so he called uh, the ambulance. Uh, the field ECG by EMS uh, showed marked um, anterior ST elevations. Um, the cath team was actually in-house and the cath lab was open, so he bypassed the ER and came directly to the cath lab. And on cath, uh, both the RCA and circumflex were normal. The LED is shown, and the clear culprit is the 100% occlusion uh, in the proximal LED. And it seems like a piece of cake. Uh, using our uh, EBU 3.5 guide and a BMW wire, uh, we dilated the LED with a 2.5 by 12 millimeter uh, compliant balloon. And just like that, uh, we've got flow back. Uh, so let's just stent this up, uh, post dilate, and then uh, we're done. And uh, it looked like a fairly large vessel. Uh, so uh, we went ahead and developed, uh, deployed a 4.0 by 18 millimeter uh, DES. And we take a quick look uh, after, before a post dilating and the LED is occluded again. Uh, we have no reflow. What uh, do we do next? Okay, so uh, when you have a no reflow situation, uh, the first thing to do is to try to figure out the cause. Uh, in a STEMI situation, uh, the most common cause is embolization uh, caused by uh, disrupted uh, thrombus embolizing downstream and clogging the arterioles and smaller vessels. A similar uh, phenomenon can happen in PCI of disease uh, saphenous vein grafts or in uh, atherectomy cases where debris uh, can embolize and clog up the downstream vessels. The mainstay of treatment are vasodilators. And here, remember that nitroglycerin, uh, which is often used, is actually not very effective at uh, treating uh, no reflow. Uh, IC calcium channel blockers are effective. Uh, I typically use IC nicardipine at boluses of 50 to 200 mics, uh, depending on the patient's blood pressure. Uh, the pre-administration of IC nicardipine may actually have some effect uh, in reducing the incidence of no reflow in rotoblader and saphenous vein graft cases. Uh, IC adenosine is also useful, and there is some evidence that IC epinephrine at doses from 50 to 200 mics uh, could be uh, effective. But uh, I am uh, particularly fond of IC nitroprusside, uh, which I have found to be very effective uh, in uh, reversing uh, no reflow. Um, there is actually a, a meta-analysis that suggests that IC nitroprusside uh, may be effective in reducing MACE in these cases uh, compared to uh, non-nitroprusside agents. And also remember that in cases of especially severe no reflow, you might need to uh, infuse the medications via a distal microcatheter. If you just infuse it through the guide, uh, the medication uh, may not actually reach uh, the distal vasculature. Um, I will generally add a glycoprotein a 2B3A inhibitor in a no reflow situation, and that's to reduce the likelihood of, of forming microvascular plugs of platelets in the clogged microvasculature. Well, the other possibility uh, is an accidental air embolus. Um, I actually did a whole video about this, but the, main, the mainstay of treatment here is immediate administration of 100% oxygen, as well as forceful injection of intracoronary saline uh, to push the bubbles through. Aspiration, especially for large and proximal bubbles, and the administration of vasodilators are also useful for um, air embolus. All right, um, the other major cause of no reflow is a dissection. Uh, for stent and balloon dissections, the treatment is easy. You've already got a wire down, so just deploy an overlapping stent to cover the dissection. Uh, make sure your stent ends in healthy tissue uh, well beyond uh, the end of the dissection. On the other hand, um, if you had a guide or wire dissection, it can be a lot trickier. Uh, you'll need to get your wire back into the true lumen and deploy uh, long stents. I've done several other videos uh, about how to deal with this. 
Other possibilities, uh, devi uh, device or wire thrombosis is possible. Uh, this is usually due to a subtherapeutic ACT or, or more uh, rarely hit or heparin-induced thromb uh, thrombocytopenia. Make sure you check that your IV line is working. This is especially true if your ACT does not seem to bump uh, despite more and more heparin. Consider uh, adding a 2B3 inhibitor or switching to bivalirudin. For possible hit, you'll obviously need to have to stop the heparin and um, switch to bivalve. Uh, this may also be the one scenario where a uh, bailout aspiration thr uh, thrombectomy uh, could be useful. Uh, severe coronary spasm can cause the appearance of no reflow, and you treat that with uh, vasodilators. And finally, pseudo lesions uh, due to vessel straightening by your wire uh, can cause no reflow in especially torturous vessels. If it's okay to pull the wire, uh, then just pull the wire and give uh, vasodilators and reassess. If you cannot pull the wire, then exchange it to a softer wire, and it's such as a SWO03, if you have that available in your lab. Alternatively, uh, you can also exchange your wire to just a microcatheter, uh, such as a fine cross, and reassess whether your no reflow is just due to pseudo lesions. The body of a microcatheter is often more flexible than a coronary guide wire and is less likely to cause uh, pseudo lesions. All right, uh, back to our patient. So uh, we decided to administer what we had on the table. Uh, we gave 200 mics of nicardipine and 96 mics of adenosine uh, via our guide. But as you can see, we uh, still had no flow. So then we then advanced a thrombectomy catheter to the distal LED and used it to administer 100 mics of uh, nitroprusside. This ensured that more of the nitroprusside got to the disco, uh, distal vascular bed. We also started a tyrofiban at this point. But finally, uh, we did get flow back. And it looks like uh, we may have a dissection at the distal edge of the stent. And maybe that's, that's what's caused uh, the uh, no reflow. So uh, we deployed an overlapping uh, 3.5 by 23 millimeter DES. Uh, we intentionally chose a longer stent uh, to make sure that it lands in distal healthy tissue and to help pin down any intramural hematoma. And we had a reasonable result after the second stent. Um, um, should we post dilate at this point? Um, even though it looked like it was probably a bad edge to section that caused the no reflow, we were still concerned that there might be a component of thrombus uh, embolization as well. Uh, we uh, certainly did not want a post-dilation balloon to embolize more thrombus and cause another round of no reflow. So to help us decide, we uh, did OCT. And on OCT, things uh, look great. Uh, the uh, stent sizing is excellent. Um, there is excellent strut apposition and no evidence of significant uh, residual dissection. So we decided that the post dilation uh, was uh, not uh, going to be necessary. Um, there was some swirl artifact, but actually there really was not a lot of re uh, residual thrombus uh, either. And uh, here is the final angiographic result, uh, which is quite satisfactory. Uh, the patient did well. Uh, his troponin peaked at 96, and his echo showed only mild uh, anterior dysfunction. Uh, he uh, went home uh, in good condition uh, a couple of days later. All right, uh, take-home messages. Uh, no reflow is more common uh, during STEMI and uh, saphenous vein graft interventions. Uh, it can also sometimes happen uh, during uh, rotational atherectomy procedures. Uh, it is most often caused by plaque or thrombus or debris disruption and embolization. Uh, we went over vasodilators, uh, the mainstay of treatment. Um, like I said, I find uh, nitroprusside uh, to be especially effective. And also remember that uh, nitroglycerin is generally uh, not effective. Uh, OCT or IVIS is useful to decide if post dilation is, ne is uh, necessary and consider other causes too, uh, including uh, dissection, uh, device thrombosis, vessel spasm, or uh, pseudo lesions. Thank you for watching.